Hey there everybody, Professor Cloud here, or Brian if you would prefer. In a previous video, I talked about how to isolate platform databases in Azure using private endpoints. And that video, along with this one, are part of an article that I wrote uh, on my website, and the actual link to that article can be found in the description of this video if you happen to be watching it on YouTube. However, not all platform databases inside of Azure can be isolated via private endpoints. And when I talk about isolation, I talk about how to make sure that you have complete control over what users or applications have access to your database. <clears throat> and that is typically called network isolation. And in the Azure world, in the cloud world, that's done via a virtual network, meaning that your database doesn't have a public endpoint, uh, that it can only be accessible from services inside of your virtual network or connected virtual networks if you happen to be using peering. And as I mentioned, in the case of Azure SQL, uh, Azure MySQL, and a few others, the primary way of doing that isolation is private endpoints. In this video, I want us to talk about the second type of isolation, and that is called virtual network integration. And that is typically used for platform databases that support a flexible server model or a serverless server model, where instead of you actually having a server that a NIC card can be attached to, you don't really have that idea. In fact, what Microsoft is doing is deploying a container or more than one to provide you with your database, whether it be Postgres or Azure SQL or whatever it might happen to be. I believe um, MariaDB also has a flexible model. Uh, there is a link to an article at the bottom of my article uh, that actually does provide you with a list of all of the services that support the virtual network integration. Uh, Redis Cache, I believe, is also one of them. So for that, let's go ahead and take a look at what the process is, and I'm going to use Postgres as my example, for how to deploy a flexible Postgres ser uh, server model and how it can be deployed into a the same virtual network that I talked about in the first video. So here we are back in my portal and we are in the same resource group where my virtual network was deployed, the VNet DB ISO. Uh, we already have the Azure SQL server-based implementation, which does have a SQL private endpoint, and as you can see, it also has a network interface. So let's go ahead and spin up a Postgres flexible model. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up Postgres, and we want to make sure to choose the Azure database for Postgres because as you can see, there are a lot of other ones out here and not all of them are managed or maintained by Microsoft. So as soon as we click on the Create button here, the first option that we're going to get is do we want flexible server or single server? You also have Azure Arc enabled Postgres as well, but we're only going to be talking about what gets deployed in the, clou in the cloud. So in this particular instance, we're talking about flexible server. If we deployed single server, the private endpoint isolation model will get used. So we're going to choose flexible server and click create. Let's go ahead and go through the process of ISO Postgres is the server name. This needs to go into South Central US because that's where my virtual network is. Choose a Postgres SQL version. Production, production large, development. I'm going to leave all of this standard. Uh, availability zones, do we want to leverage them or not? Do we want to enable high availability? Let's just skip and set all of the defaults. Then, of course, we have authentication mode, just like we had with the SQL Server. And I am going to go with Postgres authentication only and use the exact same information as I did previously. Obviously, not necessarily a good security pattern that someone should be using in a production workload, but this is for demonstration purposes. Okay, the key here though is the networking tab. You'll notice that the default under connectivity method is set to public. That means that if I were to deploy this as is right now, it would have a public endpoint. Anyone would be able to access it. But what we want is private access. And as you can see here, it's VNet integration, not private endpoints. 
So I'm going to click on that. We're then going to ask me to choose a virtual. It automatically chose one that I have available in my resource group and region that I selected, the VNet DB ISO. We're then going to choose a specific subnet. Just like we did with the private endpoints, the, the process really doesn't look all that different. It's just in how it gets deployed inside of Azure. We're going to choose VNet PostgreSQL because when using VNet integration, it cannot deploy into a VNet that already has a private endpoint attached to it. So we're going to use the PostgreSQL and let's make sure to call out these items down here at the bottom because they're very important for everyone to know, especially when you start talking to your network engineers. The subnet will be delegated for use only with PostgreSQL Flexible Server. Your current subnet selection has 251 addresses available. What this means is that you will not be able to implement another database type inside of this subnet. You will not be able to implement another type of private endpoint inside of this subnet. So although I specify 251 addresses for this subnet, what I probably should have done was use the smallest size possible, which was a slash 29. That way I could save IP addresses from a networking perspective. Once I've done that, we specify subscription, and just like with the uh, Azure SQL, we start talking about DNS. Now, unlike the private endpoint requirements that were available to us in the private endpoint, we actually do not have the ability to say no to private endpoints. So if you do deploy flexible server, and as I mentioned, Postgres is not the only option for flexible server, you will be required to implement private DNS. This will create a Azure DNS instance for you by default. So let's go ahead and click security. Uh, for encryption keys, do we want them service managed or customer managed? Tags, review and create, and we're off and running. Now, as soon as this is done uh, implementing, I'll show you exactly what shows up inside of the resource group, and I'll show you where to get access to the networking section of the flexible server in case you should want to change it. Okay, here we are back in the resource group. And the couple of things to point out here are very simple and straightforward. We have a DNS zone that has been implemented for the PostgreSQL. And we have an Azure database for Postgres Flexible Server. So let's go take a quick look at this and specifically the networking settings. And this is where we could turn on public access if we wanted to. However, one thing I do want to call out, you cannot change the virtual network at this point. It is done and finished. It is now associated and delegated for use in the virtual network and inside the Postgres SQL subnet. You could potentially associate a different private DNS zone, but you cannot move the database. In order to move the database, you would have to delete this particular server, make sure you add a backup copy of your data, create a new server in the subsequent virtual network that you wanted to move to, and then restore the database. And that's all there is to it. Now, you might be going, well, why is there different ways of isolating databases? And I mentioned this a little bit. In the single server model, there is a quote unquote software defined server sitting in your subscription that has either Azure SQL or MySQL or what have you that a NIT card can be attached to. That NIT card is an endpoint. Therefore, a private endpoint software-defined network piece or resource can be assigned to that, guaranteeing that the NIT card is placed inside of your virtual network and specifically inside of a subnet of your virtual network, at which point then you have the standard isolation capabilities available to you that you would as if you had deployed a virtual machine. In flexible server models, such as Postgres and others, there is no server because the way that Microsoft deploys these databases is in, is in a container model. And container models deployed in Kubernetes, which is what Microsoft uses, have different networking requirements in order to make those 
endpoints available. So they use a software-defined networking capability to make sure that those deployed containers appear as if they are inside of your virtual network, even though they're running inside of Kubernetes clusters that Microsoft maintains within your given region. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how to isolate your databases inside of Azure. And as always, you can always feel free to put in any comments or questions that you might have uh, with the videos in YouTube. And if you have been enjoying the content, please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hope to see you soon.